Well, hi there. These are triops, a genus of brachiopod crustaceans that have been off doing their own evolutionary thing for the last 200 million years or so, which is a long time for a creature that only lives for a few weeks, months at most, in a puddle in the middle of the desert. Wasn't there a month ago. Sort of like lungfish, but also nothing like lungfish. These guys look a great deal like horseshoe crabs, but they aren't. They're not even very closely related to horseshoe crabs. Triops, as we said earlier, are crustaceans. Horseshoe crabs aren't. They're chalicerates, like the arachnids that we covered earlier. So horseshoe crabs are more closely related to spiders than they are to triops. And triops are more closely related to mantis shrimp and praying mantises than they are to horseshoe crabs. Because praying mantises are crustaceans, just like snakes are lizards and birds are reptiles. This is just the worst channel on YouTube. Anyway, let's get back to that puddle in the desert. If you are a triops, that's home. A puddle in the desert that wasn't there yesterday and will be gone in a few weeks, as will you. But how did you get there in the first place? Does it rain triops in the desert or something? Nope. And all of the triops will be dead when it dries up. They don't just hunker down in little mucus cocoons like lungfish. They die, but one thing survives, their eggs. Honestly, the life cycle of the triops is more like a lodgepole pine than it is like a lungfish. You see, lodgepole pine seeds generally cannot germinate unless they have gone through something that would kill their parents. Fire. Well, the same is true of the eggs of triops. They will generally not hatch unless they've gone through something that would kill their parents. Total desiccation. And those eggs can remain desiccated down in the sand for years until the rains return. And it also means that they can be shipped in a Kool-Aid packet full of sand to your door and then grow up in an ephemeral pool at your house, if you know what you're doing. Which means that this prehistoric, absolutely alien looking little creature might actually make a good pet. But are they a good pet? And are triops the best pet for you. To help you figure this out, our good friend Russ from Aquarimax Pets has come here with his triops. Because of course Russ keeps triops. Russ is probably the coolest person on the planet. But he's here to help me give triops a score based on our five categories, which are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. This video is sponsored by Ridge. Y'all know I love my Ridge wallet, but every now and then I place it somewhere and I don't know where it is. And I always wish, why can't I just call it? Well, Ridge offers a smart wallet solution so you never have to lose your wallet again. The AirTag attachment attaches directly to your wallet and acts as a cash strap or money clip to help you store your hard earned cash. And once it's on there, you can use the Find My Network to find not just your phone, but your wallet. They also offer this enhanced version with this carbon fiber cover in case you don't want to show off the white air tag. You know, if you prefer a more sophisticated look. And this is the perfect time to buy as Ridge is currently running a summer sweepstakes with the chance to win a brand new upgraded Hennessy Velociraptor Ford Bronco or $75,000 cash if you're into that kind of thing. Ridge is so confident that you'll like it. And by it, I mean wallet, any Ridge product, including the AirTag attachments, that they'll let you test drive it for 99 days. And if you don't like it, you can send it back for a full refund. But I'm pretty sure you'll like it. And if you use my link, ridge.com slash Clint, you'll also get 10 bonus entries to get that Velociraptor. And by entering my promo code, Clint, you'll also get 10% off. Not too shabby. That's ridge.com slash Clint, promo code Clint. When it comes to handleability, we give Triops a score of two out of five. This is a creature that lives in the water and uses gills to breathe. So you would probably not expect for it to do very well being handled by some handsy air breathing land fish because mammals are fish, including whales. Ugh. Could, could this channel get any worse? 
Anyway, despite the fact that they live in the water and use gills to breathe, making them look like poor candidates for handling, they also look to be all covered in armor. And they can use their little leg gills out of the water to breathe from the surface, since ephemeral pools don't stay oxygenated for very long. So maybe they are better suited to handling than we thought. And they really can handle it both better and worse than you would probably think. The main way that it is worse is that they aren't really as tough as they look. Generally speaking, you can either build quickly or you can build well. And when you live in a pool that might be gone tomorrow, speed beats quality. They are much more fragile than they appear. They can be scooped up. They are relatively easy to move with a fine woven aquarium net, but it is surprisingly easy to smash one. So probably avoid handling them as much as possible. That said, they aren't gonna do you any harm. They are a bit hard to grab, but that is about their only defense. Must get big, no time for weapons. When it comes to care, um, it's not rocket surgery, but a good understanding of desert water cycles might come in really handy. So I'm gonna turn the time over to Russ from Aquarimax Pets, a channel that you should totally be subscribed to, who I just learned does awesome educational presentations under the seriously deserved title of Russ the Bug Guy, which I think is just the best. Certainly better than Russ the Brachiopod Boy even though that would be more appropriate today. But Russ, by whatever name you prefer, has so kindly come down here today to help with the first ever Clint's Reptile Academy and to teach us how to care for triops. Thank you, Clint. When caring for triops, you need to keep in mind the cycles of an ephemeral pool and that due to these cycles, the different life stages of a triops population have differing requirements. So care for triops is gonna come down to five stages dormancy, hydration, growth, reproduction, and desiccation. You will receive your triops in the first stage, dormancy. There'll be dry little specks mixed with dry sand or a similar substrate and a little Kool-Aid packet. As long as the eggs stay dry, they can survive for quite some time, we're talking years here, with absolutely no care at all. Once you decide you want to open that Kool-Aid packet and hatch those eggs, it's time for the next stage, hydration. You'll need a small container, preferably with a reasonable amount of surface area. You also need water, but you won't want to just use any water. Keep in mind that an ephemeral pool fills with rainwater, which is pretty pure, at least at first. Tap water is usually too full of minerals and other contaminants to hatch triops eggs. So using it can be a recipe for failure. I've had success with distilled water, water that has been run through a reverse osmosis unit, or one of the previous two water sources mixed with spring water. Since triops typically hatch in the warmer and sunnier seasons of the year, both warmth and light are important triggers to hatching. And so try to provide temperatures of around 76 to 80 Fahrenheit, 24.4 to 26.6 Celsius, or 297.6 to 299.8 Kelvins, and some bright illumination. In this temperature range, they usually hatch within 24 hours, if not sooner. They can hatch in cooler temperatures, but it can take several days. Once they hatch, they're visible as minuscule specks moving jerkily in the water. And that brings us to the growth stage. After hatching, the triops will begin to grow incredibly fast. In good conditions, there will be a noticeable size difference every day from hatching to maturity. Not surprisingly, that growth needs to be fueled by food and lots of it. Both starving triops and overfeeding them can kill them quickly. So I'd better give you some tips here. Most triops kits include some organic material along with the eggs and the sand that will give rise to a bloom of microorganisms. Those microorganisms will make a great meal for the triops for the first couple of days. So you don't need to feed them additional food during that time, but don't be surprised at all if they also snack on each other. You can reduce not eliminate cannibalism by feeding the powdered food that probably came along with your triops eggs, or you can just use finely ground fish food. In an astonishingly short period of time, just a few days, the triops will outgrow the powdered food and move on to the pelleted food that may have been included in your triops kit, or just use sinking fish food pellets. Since triops are not picky eaters, you can also provide small pieces of peeled raw carrot, sweet potato, zucchini, and other vegetable matter. Or 
really just about anything else. The trick is to try and keep this triop satiated without compromising water quality. And since small pieces of those vegetables provide a readily available snack that doesn't decompose too quickly, I do tend to use those. Once the triops are about a week old, you may wish to move them to a larger aquarium. Now, large, sudden changes in water parameters can be fatal to triops, so water changes should be very gradual. I often use a drip acclimation system, and you can use spring water or water from an established aquarium. You can also provide gentle filtration once the triops are a week or so old, and not in any danger of being sucked up by said filter because they are fairly fragile and don't tend to survive the inner workings of filters. An additional point relating to water quality is the fact that these crustaceans need a source of calcium, which is an extremely short supply in rainwater and distilled water. In an ephemeral pool, some calcium usually dissolves into the water from the desert sand or soil, but in an aquarium, you'll need to provide that calcium or they will lack what they need to keep up with the furious pace with which they build and molt those exoskeletons, and they'll die. Some triops kits include small limestone pebbles for this purpose. Alternatively, you can add small pieces of cuttle bone or aragonite sand, which is sold for use with marine aquariums. Once the triops have matured, we're on to the next phase, reproduction. Triops longicaudatus can reproduce through parthenogenesis or hermaphroditism, and certain populations have males and females that must mate with each other to reproduce. Those found most often in the hobby are likely to belong to one or more of the former groups and will be able to lay viable eggs. Once your triops are about 10 days old, they will begin to lay those eggs. The eggs are often visible in pouches near the end of the carapace. Before or at this time, you may want to add some fine, clean sand to the aquarium. This will give the triops a place to lay their eggs and it will help protect many of the eggs from being eaten by the adults. Triops have adapted to grow at a furious pace all so that they can lay their eggs before their ephemeral pool dries up. So once they manage to lay eggs, their days are numbered. Some adult triops only last a few weeks, even with the best care. But if you're lucky, they might last a couple of months. Once your triops pass away, the upside is that you probably have plenty of eggs and can start the process over again. And that brings us to desiccation. As Clint mentioned, most triops eggs need to go through a dry period before they will hatch, as they do in the wild. This leads some people to believe that they should let the tank sit and gradually dry out, and then they should just fill it back up again with water. That method usually leaves too many minerals behind and also causes bacterial blooms that aren't healthy for hatching triops and they die. Instead, you should harvest some of the sand from the bottom of your triops aquarium, spread it out flat, put it where it will dry fairly quickly. Keep the sand dry for at least two weeks or until you want to hatch the eggs. Then you can use two to three teaspoons of this dry sand to start a new generation of triops. One last point relating to desiccation. Triops have a sort of population insurance policy built into their eggs. A certain proportion of the eggs will not hatch the first time they are immersed in rainwater or distilled water or spring water, but they will hatch the second time or even the third time. In the wild, this helps to protect the population from extinction when the rains are too brief to create a pool that lasts long enough to allow the triops to lay eggs. In a captive environment, this gives you the chance to try again as well. So if you follow these steps and pay attention to the instructions that come with your triops kit, you could have a colony of triops that could last potentially forever. Back to you, Clint. Thank you so much, Russ. You've really been amazing today. I know that I have so much to learn from Russ. Whenever I'm around him, I just pick his brain and he never runs out of things to teach me. If only he had a YouTube channel. Oh, that's right. I'd like to take a moment just to thank our patrons at Patreon, like Russ from Aquarimax Pets, who's been a patron of ours on Patreon for I don't even know how long. And one thing that Russ knows is that every week we have an entire extra video just for our patrons at Patreon. That can only be viewed, of course, by our patrons at Patreon. And this week, that video is gonna feature an awful lot of Russ from Aquarimax Pets who will be able to watch that video because he's a patron on Patreon. And so can you, just like Russ, if you're into that kind of thing. So if you are interested in seeing those extra videos or the host of other great features we have for the people that make videos like this possible, please consider checking it out on Patreon. When it comes to hardiness, I really had a hard time deciding. What score do you give to an animal with a super high attrition rate that lives only a couple of months under the best of conditions? Well, I'm going with four. 
four out of five. So hear me out. If you keep triops, you don't keep a triops, you keep a colony of competitive little cannibals that are trying to make it to maturity before the world ends in a few days. And while no one individual is very hardy at all, populations of these little guys have been surviving in temporary desert puddles that regularly dry up completely, leaving nothing but sand and memories for like 200 million years. They deserve something around a 600 out of 5 for hardiness. But amazingly, surviving at your house may be an even more inhospitable environment. You could kill your colony, but if you do it right, you could keep a colony of these guys running for the next few hundred million years. That is if your 6 millionth great grandchildren are on board with that. So, 4 out of 5. There are many ways to kill them, as Russ explained, but even if you kill all of them, you might just be an infusion of low mineral water away from resurrection. When it comes to availability, we give Triops one of the most emphatic of fives. And that is amazing because I've never seen them at a pet shop or an expo. But the reality is that they can be shipped to your door as easily as Kool-Aid. And uh, oh yeah. It doesn't get much easier than that. If you want some, they can be to your door as fast as you're willing to pay to ship them there. When it comes to upfront costs, we give Triops a score of 5 out of 5. A packet of sand laced with the foundations of a nearly immortal colony of Triops costs more than a packet of Kool-Aid, but not a whole lot more. You'll need a container for juveniles and another one for adults, some distilled water and some spring water, a source of heat and a source of bright light, a small container of fish food, some fine sand, and a source of calcium such as limestone pebbles or cuttlebone. And if you really want to go over the top, you might want a small water filter for your adults. And then you're done. There's nothing very expensive or even difficult to find in there. And that is why, overall, we give Triops a score of 3.8 out of 5. Honestly, if what you want is something that looks like it should be extinct, but isn't, that you could drive to extinction in your home and then have pop up again, like daisies, except uh, daisies that look as alien as horseshoe crabs, but are more closely related to praying mantises, which also look like aliens, then Triops might be the best immortal pet that you can get in a Kool-Aid packet for you. As always, like and subscribe, and subscribe to Aquarium Max Pets, and we hope to see you real soon. Okay, <clears throat> glasses off. That could be some weird continuity. Okay. <laughs> Clint. Yes. How's your voice? Not so good. Why? Well, because A, uh, on Friday night, Saturday night, Saturday night, I went to see my favorite band play, which is Matchbox 20, and I think Rob Thomas sang the most. But you were right behind. But I was second most. <laughs> I was like I was auditioning. <laughs> I'm sure everyone around you appreciated that. They, they did, I think. I think they were too, right? Yes, they were. Um, but I was second most. <laughs>